Hello YouTube, welcome to part 6 of the Fake Merc Character Study. Before I start, as usual, or introduction to the topic. So, there was another raid on the video of part 5 last week, so Jason again tried to shut down the video by commenting on it. Of course, it didn't work. And this time also, people were aware that it was him using suck accounts. So, a lot of the subscribers and I had fun with it. And I hope that he keeps it up. I hope he, he comes back again so we can have fun and make fun of him. And he can continue to expose himself as the idiot and the hoof that he is. In terms of projection, as I said, I'm going to continue making monthly installments. I might, and I say might, have a little treat for you guys. Meaning that I'm preparing something for Christmas. You might get a double episode on that day. We'll see. I'm not promising anything. But I do want you to have a mentee Christmas and so I'm going to see if I can actually produce that for you. For people who might be wondering why the other installments of the Fake Mode Character Studies were taken off of YouTube, it's not because they were stricken, it's not because they were deleted. It's because I had to private them. And I privated them for one reason. YouTube has uh, new guidelines now. And whenever YouTube has new guidelines, there's always uh, what could be called bug exploits, meaning that you can always find a way to, you know, pick that one breach in our guidelines and uh, rules and you can use it to abuse the system, which Bloho is an expert at and he's done in the past. For people who haven't followed back in the days, YouTube rolled a new feature which is called a content ID strike where you can select videos that have your content in them and have them deleted and on top of that you can strike and delete the channels. And the second that was implemented, before people could really realize what was going on, Jason jumped on the opportunity and he wiped the entire internet off of content that he produced, things that exposed him, the lies that he said, the death threats that he sent, and he got all of that completely bleached. And the thing is, I, I looked at the guidelines, there is something about that in the guidelines, which is, for people who want to watch, you can go and check it out, it's about facial recognition. So. I will, uh, I've, I've run tests, uh, so far so good, they cannot be touched. I'm running continuous tests to make sure that he cannot strike the videos and the channels. Not necessarily because I don't want the channel to be deleted, I don't really care much, but I don't want to give him a win, and so I'm just making sure that he has no recourses. The second I, I'm 100% sure that nothing can be done, they will be back up, don't worry. They're just privated, and you will be able to access them uh, again. And as far as the videos that are coming to come afterwards, you will see that depending on how fast I can work on the case, videos will get privated after a while. But for now, part 5 and part 6 will stay live. So we're going to get into part 6 right now because I've been teasing for the past uh, two months about telling you something about the fake mug situation because I haven't spoken about it much and it's for this episode. So stay tuned because we'll get to it. But before that, last week, we discussed Tommy's garage, we discussed the way that he interacts with other individuals, his social anxiety, the fact that he was never an alpha male, and that all of that is just a way for him to try and project the image of a tough guy that never existed in the first place because he is desperately shy as a person and as a male. And to, to continue with that idea of trying to hide who he truly is, trying to, you know, hide his, uh, his uh, all of the, the weak points that he might have, all of the flaws that he might have. We also know that he's obsessed with his physique, even though he claims to not be, he claims to just be a pure powerlifter, even though it's nonsense. And a big giveaway of that is his belt. If you look at his videos, he always wears a belt. He, he seldom goes around without a belt. And that's doubly strange because he's always shirtless. So you'll see that guy without a shirt with the belt and he uses the belt for any exercise and every exercise, even squats and deadlifts are way beyond the only exercise that he uses the belt for. And the question is why? Well, when you look at his body, it's fairly easy to understand why. He hides his fat with the belt. He's like those chicks that, you know, try and wear things that are going to compress the fat so it actually pushes it up and it looks like they have a nice figure. For him, it doesn't really work though. It's like squished pork. So you have a portion of the lavender that sort of tries to escape through the belt underneath. It's, it's quite, uh, 
It's quite, it's quite visual, it's quite uh, graphic, but yet he still does it. And he's not the only one, it's really a bodybuilder thing, actually. It's funny that he does it because every time I see someone who does it, it's a bodybuilder. They wear the belt so that they can make their waist look thinner, so that it makes their V-taper look, look much better. The, the sad truth with him is, even with that trick, he still looks like a sack of lard. It doesn't work. Because at some point, you can put as much uh, cream on a pile of toots, it's still a pile of toots. The belt tactic doesn't work for him, especially because he prances around in booty shorts and shirtless for some reason. And uh, it, it's interesting too because people have noticed that, but when he's not wearing a belt, he's still wearing a contraption underneath his shirt. If you check his tutorial, especially or if he, when he makes videos when he's not training, you will see that he has something that is making his waist much smaller underneath the clothes he wears. And that's a corset. That guy actually wears a corset. Jason, the tough guy, Bloho, has a corset when he goes to the gym. And he started doing that a long time ago because if you go back to his videos from 2015, when he used to go to public gyms, he would already wear one. And you can tell one because he looks just uncomfortable. He waddles even more than he usually does, looking like an overweight penguin. And when he bends over, you can see that he's trying his hardest to not have the shirt reveal what's underneath. You can also see that because for the people who haven't realized yet, the reason why he did his weird get up from the bench where he looks like Dracula is because of the corset. Because he knows that if he gets up normally, the shirt might roll and it reveals the corset underneath. So he has to kick his legs. He has to prevent the torso shift from happening to keep hiding what keeps the waist small. And so that's the explanation. And for, and for the reason why he stopped doing that get up from the bench now is because he's shirtless. So he doesn't have to do it anymore. But that's why he used to do that in the, back in the days. It was stupid, but people couldn't really understand why. And that's the beauty of Blaha. Oh, I said his name. Who cares? That's the beauty of Blahino. It just came out. Wow. Uh, it's that every time he lies about something, it's always for a reason. There's always a hidden reason. And sometimes the lies are so stupid that normal people just cannot wrap their heads around what his true goal is. But there is always a true goal. I've told you before, but the reason why he lied about being a storied expert is because he wanted the ability to become a figure of authority on YouTube fitness. And he understood that by doing Nadi or Not videos, he would gain that. But the issue is you can't do Nadi or Not if you don't have a solid knowledge of the industry and of PEDUs. And therefore, he had to do it. And when you look across the board of who does Nadi or Not, it's always the same type of individuals. It's usually people who also take drugs. And so that was why he lied about doing a, a Debo reseller, even though he knows it's illegal, he claimed to sell it to sell drugs to minors in colleges, and yet he still did it. That's the reason why. But with him, the more he lies, the more he has to lie to cover up for his lies, and eventually everything blows up. And it's always fun to try and piece it back to see where it started because it's always something stupid. So that thing of the getting up from the bench like a vampire came from that. It's from the corset. And in terms of desperately trying to present himself as something he's not, he, you, he still does it, but he, there was a time period where it was exceptionally bad. When he was in front of the camera, he would sit like this and the camera was angled in a way that it was it was lower than him and therefore it allowed him to do this. So basically what he did was he out angled the desk by pushing his body over the desk, rotating the shoulders forward to make them look bigger and he would put his arms like this and he would press them against the desk. And when you do that, what you can do is you can tense the entire arm so it looks much more jacked. On top of that, understand also that it's the equivalent of pressing with your lats against your tricep. It makes the tricep looks massive because it's pushing it to the side. When you press your arms against the table, it's the same thing. It presses the forearm to the side, the bicep to the side, so everything looks much bigger. And it looks much leaner too, which is great when you're 25% body fat and obese. 
And it's a strategy that he used for months and months. So every time he would record, he was, he was tensing every single muscle of his body and making sure he didn't let go. Because if he did, you can see the poverty aspect of his arms. He, his arms are completely mangled at this point. They might, I highly doubt they are above 14 inches because of all of the idiotic things he's done. That's his punishment in a sense. He's stuck with them, but he hates it. So he has to find, find ways to make them look bigger, which is what he's done. In the past, he's also gone through insane bulks so that he could actually gain like an inch on his arms, which was, of course, fat. But because he's devoured by his need to actually look good to people, that's what he did. And in terms of uh, being self-conscious, of course, uh, it's evident throughout the years that he really cares about what people think of him. The insane censorship of his channel. Every time someone doesn't agree with him or dislikes him, they get banned. The fact that you can clearly tell that what he does on camera is mostly for the approval of his viewers. There was a video back then where he showed his new car and it was a, a poverty car at that. And when he didn't get the response he liked, he just deleted the video. Again and again, that's the cycle with this guy. This is why he needs to get off of YouTube is because he's trying to gain self-confidence via the eyes of others, but it never works like that. It cannot work like that. And the only thing it's doing, it's, it's making him miserable and it's just feeding into the negativity of his channel because he cannot just be himself. He's always someone else. And that's interesting, interesting too, because he has a weird idea of what being a man is. He clearly does not really possess what some would call an alpha demeanor. He's, you know, he's shy, he's a, he's a better, he's timid. He doesn't really want the attention on him when he's in public. And that's fine. The thing is, as I explained in the past video, I truly think that he, he wants to be what his dad wants him to be so bad that he's trying to be that Texan badass. And all of his personas, all of the LARPs that you've seen in the past years are explained by that fact. He's trying to create an image of someone he will never be. And he knows he's not that person, which is why it's impossible for him to keep up the act because it's just not him. You can't lie for that long, especially when you're an idiot. It's already tough enough to keep up a lie when you have the ability to make up lies, but when you don't, it's the reason why he always ends up being exposed, always. And the funny thing too is that he's tried so hard to be that tough guy and it felt so many times that he resorted to what a lot of people do, which is he's trying to reinvent masculinity. So if you, li if you listen to him, if you listen to his advice, women don't like big arms, women don't like a big chest, they don't like tall guys, they don't like V-tapers, no. According to Bloho, women love big legs and big glutes. Personally, in my life, I have never ever heard a woman say, I like men with big legs because they, they really don't like quads and arm strings. They don't really enter the equation glutes, maybe, but between a big pair of legs and a big pair of arms, women are going to go for the big arms 99% of the time besides a few deviants. So why does he lie about it? He lies about it because he's trying to reinvent the, the physical attributes that women like so that they can match what he perceives he has which in reality he doesn't have because he has fatty legs and glutes. He's obese. It's not muscle. No woman likes that. And he knows it. He's been outside in the world. He sees the way women look at him with disgust. At no point do women like him. It's also the reason why he creates sock accounts. And then he goes on Google and he types like woman fitness. He picks the first picture of like a good looking woman in shape. He adds it and then he compliments himself on his channel. Have you seen that? He, the worst part too is that he utilized those uh, channels to comment underneath my video about him. And then he went and used the same account to compliment himself. This is, I explained it in the past, this is suck account schizophrenia to a dangerously high level because you might think that he's just trolling, but I, I think this is his last hope. In a sense, I truly think that he's now entered a stage where writing comments about himself on his own page is the last thing he has in terms of feeling good about himself. Because even the people who compliment him, he doesn't trust them because he can't. All of them are trolls and he knows that they are just trolls. 
So all of the compliments that they give him don't do anything for his ego. So at the end of the day, a comment that he likes himself is the only thing he can trust in the world. You might think to yourself, how can one man get to this point? I'll get to that. It was a slow descent. It was 100% deserved. But it doesn't change the fact that it's extremely sad. In terms of uh, being masculine, when you look objectively at the facts, he's quite feminine, feminine, uh, feminine himself. He has uh, large hips. He has a large waist. He has narrow shoulders. The way he behaves around others, his mannerism, his gesture is quite feminine in nature. When you look at his uh, male attributes, he also tends to not really have most of those androgenic traits that we attribute to males. And he's, he's deeply aware of those facts too. Because if we can see it, trust me, he can see it too. And with that comes the whole bunch of issues that I've discussed in the past. The fact that he's homophobic, even though I'm almost 100% certain that he's actually gay. Or at least he's deeply closeted because of the abuse he had to go through, I think, by the end of his dad that didn't want his son to be gay. Which, you know, he's almost 50, it's time to just accept who he is. And his sexuality, there's nothing wrong with being gay. He's also a racist, which I don't know still to this day how his channel is not banned by YouTube. Because the fact that he was able to post some of the videos he posted without receiving as much as a strike is a testimony to how incompetent this company is as a whole. They're real quick to shut down certain things, but then they let other things fester completely. And in terms of racism... I want to stop here and I want to say something because I've seen some comments in the past and I want to address them. When you hear someone talk about racism, don't get triggered by it. Okay? Racism is a thing. People who hate other people based on their race is a thing. It's not, it's not always political. Sometimes it just is something that happens in real life and it needs to be called out because it's idiotic. And if you yourself understand that racism is stupid, then you should also have the maturity to just accept the fact that it's not always used as a way to cancel someone. And in this case, the cancelment, the cancellation, I don't know how to say that in English, should have happened a long time ago because Bloho made videos about, and for the people who remember those videos, they're still available out there, he made videos stating, and I quote, that the treatment of Japanese people during World War II after Pearl Harbor in the US was justified, and that this same treatment should have been applied to Muslims in the US after 9-11, straight from his mouth, meaning that he was cheering on the idea of putting kids that had nothing to do with the situation, innocent people, US citizens that were just of, I don't know, Saudi Arabian descent, to put them in detainment camp to punish them from the actions of their government if and only if you believe that they were involved in 9-11. I don't understand how you can support that. If you support him as a person, if there are still people who are going to watch this video and tell me he's not a bad person, go and watch those videos. What was he doing back then? What is it trolling? Were those jokes? Where is the punchline? There is no joke. Was it pastiche? Is it a sarcastic way to criticize American interventionism in the world? I don't think so. I think he was dead serious. But the worst part about that is, I also think that these convictions come from him being deeply racist. And he is the type of person, I think, that has nothing of note going on in their life. So the last thing they can be proud of is being white. That's the one thing. And they are going to derive from that the idea that they are immediately superior to other people. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you vote for. This is always stupid. You did not achieve anything by being born white or black or Asian. You don't get to put other people down just based on that. But that's what he's done again and again. And it always blows my mind when I see in his comments... People who are black who support him, it's like, what exactly are you doing? Did you just not do your research that the guy is a complete racist? Or do you just not care? And in that sense, maybe it's, it's your prerogative, but what is happening? Is that a Stockholm Syndrome thing? Because 
across the board, that's something that he's been pretty open about. I will get back to it, but there was a time that he himself recorded his intervention, quote unquote, where he, I don't even know how to say it, attacked. He, he got his gun and pointed it at two black dudes that were in his apartment building, got them on their knees, took their passports and their IDs away from them, and nothing, and nothing happened back in the days, even though there, it should have been, because these people refused to sue him for reasons that I will get into that are quite menti, actually, but the, the, the images are still out there. I mean, it's still an evidence. And the thing is, he's completely deleted those videos from his channel, so you can't strike them, you can't report them to YouTube anymore, but he is hanging by a thread because his real face, his real behavior is that of a racist. And eventually he's just going to, you know, he's going to go completely insane again. He's going to reveal it. And this time he's going to get sacked, I hope. I think it was on part four. I, I must have said something in part four that really triggered him. And so he started uh, insulting me based on what he believed was my religion. And he clearly harbors a lot of resentment for Muslims. So we'll see how the situation develops, but yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much 100% confirmed and is the reason why he's despicable. And in terms of hypocrisy, you also have to keep in mind that this is the same man who claimed to be a Democrat and a leftist. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into the considerations of politics on this video, but you can, I think, accept the fact that in terms of being progressist and anti-racist, the left tends to be more vocal about these attributes belonging to them. And it's funny to see that when he was living in the UK, he was claiming to be that. He was anti-Trump, he was anti-Republicans, he hated, hated Republicans, he hated the Texas culture, the Texan culture, and he was 100% a bleeding art liberal. And the second he makes it back in the States, he turns into a right-wing extremist. How do you reconcile the two ideas? The, it's easy to reconcile. One, th there's a very strong chance that he actually never was a liberal, he just adapted to the situation around him. And two, Beyond, just beyond the fact that he lives in Texas, I truly think that he has no identity. Meaning that he is, a, uh, he is going to adapt to any situation he can be in. He's like a roach. There is a reason why people call him roach. is because he will do whatever it takes to survive. But as you can see, people who flip-flop their political identities when it's convenient are already trash and are already hypocrites and you shouldn't trust them or believe them. And on top of that, you will see that his current beliefs which are the ones of a right-wing Texan badass with guns, don't even match his lifestyle because for multitudes of reasons, he has no right to be that. But I think I'll get into that later. And in terms of flip-flopping also, he used to be vegan. He used to, he had a, a, an insane video about him befriending a cow, becoming a friend with the cow. He calls the cow my friend cow in the video. I'm not making this up. And eventually the cow got slaughtered and he cried for his cow. And therefore, he couldn't bear the thought of eating meat ever again in his life. Two months later, he gets sued. He has to go back in the US and now he eats steak every day. So where is the lie? What is that individual? What does he have in his life that is not a complete fabrication? Besides the fact that he has, I don't know, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you one thing he's actually honest about. He cannot even admit he's bored. You can see his bored scalp and he still cannot say, I'm bored. I, if you have one, tell me in the comments. Tell me about one thing in his life that he's not lying about. Because I cannot right now, with all of the documents I have here, think about one thing. So, when it comes to actually talking about the real reason why he started doing the, the fake muck stuff. So the history of the fake muck is quite interesting because it started much earlier than most people think. It actually started way before he got sued by Lane and he was living in the UK. And what he started doing is that he started dropping hints in his videos about him being a mercenary, him being an active duty. And it was never actually blatant, but it was always there. And it was kicked into overdrive after he got sued by Lane. And the reason why is very simple. 
when he got sued, people were uh, were able to access the court documents and they realized that he had no assets, which also showed that he had no house, he had no estate, he had no cash flow. He was destitute. He always has been destitute. And that is a situation that Bloho couldn't really deal with because if there's one thing he doesn't like, it's for people to know that he's poor and that he's actually a parasite. And therefore, he had to come up with an idea and an excuse. And the excuse was that he was actually making money, but the money was a pension that was given to him by the U.S. government for his past work as a mercenary. So that's where the lie originated from. That's the, the, the genesis and the ignition of the lie. And the reason why the lie started before he even knew that he could use that to protect his image was because it was trying to embellish his image because he's 5'7", he's bald, he's obese. He had to find a way to look badass. Because you can't, I mean, when you look at him, the first thing you think is, this is a lunch lady which shavers her head for some reason, or this is someone who has a mental disability and is the brother of Jason Genova, or you might also think this is someone who takes estrogen pills and is trying to transition. And he doesn't like these three options, so he came up with the fourth, which is, I'm a reptilian overlord and I actually was, was a military member. For all of the reptilian things, we'll talk about that later. And so there are excellent videos from the past about this, but the one that people remember the most is the fish hook one, where I think this was actually back in Texas, so the timeline might be wrong, but before that, he actually dropped hints of having you know, special awareness, even though he bangs his head on the barbell every three days and being able to really detect if someone was hostile to him or not based on their vibe. All of these lies to create the idea that he had a clandestine background. And that is a strategy that across the board with frauds is extremely prevalent. Nether did it as well. All of the guys who pretended to be black belts of whatever did it as well, which by the way, Bloho did. He pretended to have two black belts. And it's a strategy that is used because you can't really prove it wrong in a sense. Since it's supposed to be clandestine, by default, it's supposed to be underground and there should be no trace of it. So it's the perfect crime. In reality, no one can prove that you're just a lying sack of pus. And this is why he utilized it, this lie. And then when he realized that he needed a cover to explain why he had no money, he spun that into, I used to be a mercenary. And when all of that blew in his face, because it blew in his face, there's another thing that got destroyed. Because, and that is the scoop a lot of people don't know about, he was in discussions and he was negotiating a contract with a tactical school. He was negotiating a contract to open his own tactical school to take in students to teach them, to teach them how to shoot, teach them how to reload, to teach them military strategies. That was supposed to happen. It was in the talks and it got completely derailed because people exposed him as, as a stolen virus. But keep in mind that for the most part, if the entire lane debacle hadn't happened and he somehow managed to go back to the US on his own accord, he would have been able to do that. Meaning that there was a company out there who trains people with guns, who was stupid enough to give this guy an endorsement and to give him students. I wouldn't trust that guy to keep my plants because I know he couldn't take care of them. He killed a dog. I hope the dog is not dead, but there's a strong chance he killed a dog through neglect. Look at his body. He can't take care of himself. Imagine him in charge of people. I hope it is in my heart exists the hope that people would have called him out. They would have seen that dude walk in and say, I'm not learning anything from that guy. But strong chance that it wouldn't have happened because there was a company willing to trust him with that. So we literally dodged a bullet on this one. And uh, thankfully, Professor Bloho was never a reality, but it could have been. And this is where the lie actually came. When he lies, he always has steps. It's always like this. He lies to protect his ego. He lies to protect his image. He lies to, he lies to make money because this guy is the grievous pig you've ever seen in his life. Keep in mind, he made 90 or not videos for the ad revenue and for the subscribers. And every single time he does something on YouTube, it's for money. I don't know if I should get into that now. It might be a reveal that I need to keep for later, even though a lot of people are already aware of that. I think I'm going to keep it for later, but 
The reason why he's not uploading as much nowadays is for the same reason. It's a three-step lie, and it's a three-step lie that is quite obvious to see that pretty much hinges on him making no money at all and also proves that the only money he makes is through his disability check, but he's not disabled. So he's actually frauding the welfare system. But we'll get into that later. Because I want to move on to a potentially uh, more interesting topic, which is the AAS ASMR channel. So this one is actually one that Bloho is extremely anxious about, meaning that he has banned people just for mentioning ASMR on his channel, which tells you that it's something he really doesn't want to see unveiled. So the ASMR channel is actually Bloho's attempt at uh, cash grab, as usual, and with him it's always the same too, because he always tries and find a way to put in as little efforts as possible to make as much money as possible. It's the reason why he's never had a job in his life, is because he's a lazy slug. Across the board, he's always been that. And for him, ASMR was basically playing World of Warcraft, recording the screen and talking into the mic with a very, uh, very low voice. That was his idea of ASMR. And uh, across the board, he's a copycat. He's copied... Um, uh, uh, I, I can't reveal that now, but he tried to copy the entire channel's name of a big channel to steal traffic from them. He got almost sued for that, by the way. Uh, no, uh, almost no people know that, but across the board, he doesn't have any creativity, so he copies people. And uh, he's copying Alpha Destiny's training right now. What he's done with this strategy and approach was... He actually went and checked a ISMR on YouTube. He saw that these people made millions of views and he tried to replicate that success, but always by putting as little effort as possible. It's always the same with him. Like he sees a paper saying that cardio is good for fat loss. So what does he do? He sets a stationary bike and he, he pedals weekly for three hours while playing, playing video games. And then he wonders why he gets no result and he's still obese at the end. Same logic for the ASMR. He never got many views, but people eventually found out about his channel because he is awful about actually hiding his activity on the internet. Even though he's supposed to be a, uh, a mercenary and he was able to, you know, leave no alibi and dust his tracks. Across the board, with that, that ASMR, it got revealed. He shut it down immediately. He dissociated his name from it and he stopped making video about it. And to this day, he still refuses to admit that he made those videos. But there is one in particular I want to talk about. But first, I'm going to check the time. Okay. I think we can go for another 10, 15 minutes. So, there was one epic video about him where... There's a slight moment where the audio dies off in the clip and you can clearly hear him take a piss in the middle of the video, which means this guy is such a pig that he actually either pissed in a jug at his feet while he played World of Warcraft or took his laptop with him to the toilet to take a piss or took his mic with him. And for some reason, for some ungodly reason, decided not to edit out the audio from the clip because he's so lazy, he couldn't take, it takes five seconds. You plug the clip in Audacity, you cut the audio and you import the clip. Five seconds. He couldn't even do that. This is someone that took the idea and mindset of being a leech and parasite so far that he's not able, willing to do that. To this day, he still doesn't add any custom thumbnails to his videos, still does no editing to his videos. He hasn't edited a single one. At some point, you need to. I'm personally pro no cuts and raw footage, but not for 8,000 videos, especially when you repeat yourself. If you were to actually take his catalog and shred it down to an appropriate number for the videos that make sense, you would be down to maybe 500, meaning that the vast majority of his content is regurgitated garbage, stuff that should have been deleted from YouTube, by the way, because you're not supposed to repost content, and yet he gets away with it again 
I explained why in part five, I think it's because he sent them a letter telling them that he bonked his head as a kid and that therefore he's disabled. He pulled a Genova basically. I can't prove it, but that's my explanation. So that's that for the ASMR. If you want to make him mad, go on his channel and talk to him about it. Don't even insult him. Just say, hey, are you ever going to do ASMR videos again? He will immediately ban you. In terms of channels that people don't know about, he also had a philosophy channel. It was called Ask Jason. <laughs> Who in their right mind would ask that guy a question? I have a little, I have a little uh, nugget of, of, of gold, of menti gold for you. I did some research and I realized one thing. His Q&A videos that he does, they, they are cycled through his uh, Facebook, meaning that you're supposed to ask the question on Facebook. I went and dug into the accounts that actually ask him questions. And nine times out of 10, I found out that there were suck accounts. He asks himself questions for his own Q&A. We are that close to having found the most pathetic human being on earth. That close. And all, to me, he's a runner up. He's, he's almost there. But he, his coping mechanisms to go through life are almost spectacular. Meaning that there should be a documentary about him. Bloho, if you, I know you watch this, I don't even have to say, say if you watch this, contact me through whatever mean you have. I think the government gives you welfare phones, Obama phones, I think they're called. Send me a, a text or whatever. We can organize something. I think Vice would make a documentary about your life because you're a human slug. You're the one specimen of human slug that we have. You're a brand new species. You've never managed to reproduce, thank God. But... If you could, we could start a brand new branch of humanity. You might be the missing link. Your blood might have the cure for cancer or something. We need to research you. So, you know, we can, we can contact HBO, Netflix. We can do something around this. I already have thumbnails ready for the, for the, the affiche of the movie. We could, make some, we could make some money. You could actually afford to replace your teeth. That could be great. That could be a, a second part where we make a, a documentary about the only human being that survived for 20 years with almost no teeth. But I digress. So the philosophy channel was basically that. It was a Q&A channel where people asked him questions about philosophy. He's never read a book of philosophy in his life. He has... He, he's not... He's not stupid. Because calling him stupid would be an insult to stupid people. He's... He's worse than that because he's actually, he thinks, or rather he projects the idea that he is smart. He's a vulnerable narcissist. So of course he wants people to think he's smart. Deep down he knows he isn't. But that was why he made that philosophy channel. But again, same logic as with the tactical school. Can you, can you, can you imagine if it worked? If he never got exposed and he actually had a successful uh, philosophy channel? What would he talk about on this channel? Because he, do he doesn't understand concepts. He cannot even replicate things that he read from Google. So in terms of actually creating his own knowledge, what would he talk about? That would be an interesting site. So again, if you want to ask him questions about that, maybe he would make more videos about philosophy. Why not? I think he made like one about being short, where he was trying to distantiate himself from the question as much as possible. He was like, I'm talking about that for the short man on the channel, but I'm not short. He's 5'7", he's a manlet, like the rest of them. And so he was talking from experience. That was the one time he was actually talking from experience. But of course, he couldn't own it up because he hates himself. And in terms of trying to always reinvent himself, he's now a coach. Again, who would take advice from that guy? Someone who's made no gains in 20 years, who looks like he's never lifted a weight in his life, who refuses to compete in powerlifting, who would want that guy? The answer is no one. I know certain guys on YouTube Fitness who coach. They're already struggling. It's not a lucrative business for the most part. Unless you have a lot of visibility, it's tough to keep clients and make a living as a coach on YouTube Fitness. So now, try and picture someone who doesn't look like they lift, who cannot prove that they lift the weight they, the, the weight they prove, who has so many skeletons in his closet, I mean, at this point, again, it's a miracle that he's still in the closet because with all of his fat and, and just fat walls and the skeletons, it's very cramped in that closet. I can tell you that. I think the closet is bigger than his apartment. 
he still manages to try and pretend that he's a coach. Like anyone's going to buy that. And the reason why he does that, as I said before, is because his money comes from welfare. But he has to explain why he makes money because he just cannot admit that he's just living off of the taxpayer. And so he came up with the cough thing because when you're a cough, you can pretend that people pay you to cough them. Still no job. <laughs> Never had a job in his life. As I said before, he should just go become a bagger at a grocery store. People said in the comment, oh, he would never do that. They don't background check for that. Unless, I mean, the issue is that he does live in a state where stolen valor is not taken too kindly, which is the reason why he doesn't come out of his house. But he could still make it. He can just, I was going to say he can just pretend to be disabled and get a job at pick and save, but he doesn't have to pretend. The second he opens his mouth, they're going to be like, okay, you have a disability, just come work for us. At least he'd make a decent living and he'd be in contact with people. It could save him at this point. So <clears throat> I think we're going to maybe do one more. What is this? Sometimes I, I rediscover things in my documents. Okay, we're going to stop uh, to finish with that last time because it won't take too long. As you can see, there's a lot of material to talk about. So the, this is definitely going to be a 15 powder. So that's last thing I want to talk about is what he's done to his body. And that's important because I made a video recently talking about genetics and how they don't matter. And some people told me that it's not true because if you look at Jason Bloho, it's his genetics that made him a slug. And to an extent, it's true, meaning that he, he was born to be an aesthetic, uh, as Vifluvian Physique would say, he, has a body, he is hated by God. He has a body that says, God hates you, which was the mentiest of men. I mean, if you missed that one, please go back and do it. Like, put this video and go check it out. Uh, I, don't, I think his name is Igor from Vitruvian Physique. Igor, that little troll that he is, actually went and Googled a picture of Bloho, put it as a thumbnail, and graded his body a 1 out of a 10 in terms of genetics. And then in the video, he showed the picture and said, if you look like this, it means that God hates you. And Bloho blew his stop. He made a video that is still out there, you can go check it out, where he's almost crying because it's like, how would you, why would you say that? Because he's just aware. He's aware of what he looks like. And he, the comebacks are legendary. He's a comeback where he says, where are your calves? Why are your calves, Mr. Genetics? If you have such good genetics, why are your calves? Implying that he has big calves when he has chicken legs. But, and again, a digression, but there's too much to say about uh, Blahino. Kof truly is a national treasure at this point. When, when it comes to his genetic, yes, he has bad genetics for aesthetic, but so do I. I mean, I have a narrow frame, I have wide shoulders, I have a wide, wide waist, just like he does. Even though he says he has a relatively narrow waist, n relatively narrow hips, he doesn't. He has, he has, he's a framelet and a manlet. I'm just a framelet. But he also did that to himself, meaning that he wasn't born like this. No one is born like this. He took PEDs early on in his life, it destroyed his hormonal profile, he took oil, which destroyed his arms, he refuses to train for bodybuilding, even though it's his true love and passion, and it created the body that you see nowadays, where he's like the Frankenstein creature, because he did that to himself. He's both Frankenstein and a creature, for the people who actually read the book. And uh, in terms of what he's done to his body too, he's made himself impotent through his drug use, he cannot have kids, which... In a sense, he castrated himself, which is what would have happened anyways if evolution did its job properly. So, in a sense, Darwinism truly is wonderful because his stupidity allowed him to cut off any amount of possibility of him reproducing, which was very slim in the first place. So, we got that going, meaning that he's the last of his name, or depending on, you know, in terms of the male line, at least, we won't get a Bloho Jr., which is... Some people would be sad at that because it means no more men's, but Genova could still be having kids, so, you know, fingers crossed. But in terms of importance, it actually was on video, too, for some reason. He filmed, filmed, filmed himself with the potency test to see if he could have kids, to which, and this is where we're introducing a very important character that is going to be quite prevalent in the series, Moon Cookie cheered at the fact that his 
sorry but couldn't actually impregnate her anymore and she was glad and she didn't say it in the video but the subtext was I am so glad I'm not going to have to carry the kids of this genetic waste. I think I think he understood it too because his face in the video says it all but that was his own doing. He is the reason why he can't have kids. And for someone who's like trying to pretend to be a patriarch and a badass right wing guy, that's sort of a, a requirement to have kids and offsprings. Uh, I think being a parasite and living off of welfare and just playing wool all day doesn't really make you an alpha male, or at least you know not in my wood. Maybe in maybe in Texas it's different. Maybe I've never been, so maybe. Uh, in terms of what is this? Oh, the breathing thing. I've said it already, but. For someone who calls himself a strength athlete, the guy is always out of breath, always at all times out of breath. How is it possible? I've been talking nonstop for 40 minutes. I'm not out of breath. It's not normal. You're supposed to be able to do the same. You're supposed to be able to breathe and talk at the same time. It's, it's, it's not a sign of a good cardiovascular system. It's a sign of someone who's not going to die of a stroke when they're 55. He claims it's because he has a deviated septum. He claims it's because, again, genetics. He was born this way. He was born a slug. Born to be slug. That's his slogan. And the last thing, and I'm going to end with this, he destroyed his metabolism. The reason why he looks like this, the reason why his body composition tends to make him look like a lunch lady is because his body stores fat in, in places that a male is not supposed to store, or at least not at that rate, because... He has no hormonal profile to speak of. And I said that in the last video. That's someone who's on test. He's injecting test. Can you imagine if he stopped? What would happen? I think I know what would happen. For people who've seen the movie uh, The Thing, at some point The Thing uh, possesses a dog and the dog turns into like a, ma a blobus mass of just, of just meat. I think that's what Bloho would look like, but just less intimidating. So I'm going to leave you with that. Again, a very lengthy character study video, but they're always so fun to make. But uh, so yeah, as I said, you might get an extra episode. Don't get uppity if you don't get one, because I see you in the comments always asking when is the next one. You know exactly when the next one is. It's every month. But you're addicted to men's, and so am I. There is no shame in that, comrades. So I'm going to leave you here, and I shall be back maybe the morning of Christmas or the week of Christmas, okay? around those waters to give you another dose of mints and I might also make another nether video just for the heck of it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.